We are going to go way down deep into the weeds today on something that I was completely unaware of until I started doing some research this after or this morning. And it was research that gave me such insight into something I didn't know about and, and will change how I make predictions, will help you to be able to make predictions, uh, and will help us to better understand Tesla as well as the overall market and investing in any stock not just Tesla, but any kind of stock investment or even other investments outside of the stock market, because we're going to understand inflation better and our ability to, uh, to predict what the PCE and the CPI are going to come up with in future months, just like the big boys do. And by the way, sometime later, I'm going to be talking to you about this. If you haven't already heard about it, uh, you know, I'm just going to tease you right now. All right. We'll be talking about that later. This is Randy Kirk and you want to hit like, and you want to hit subscribe. And then in terms of notifying, uh, on Saturday morning, we're going to have, of course, the meeting with Larry Goldberg, where he and I are going to talk about Kathy Wood's report from Friday night. Now, maybe you watch Kathy Wood's report, but I bet you'd be interested to hear what Larry has to say. And maybe you might even be interested in what I have to say about what Kathy had to say. And then I think also on Saturday, maybe Saturday midday, uh, we're going to have uh, Brian Wong on, and Brian says that he's got some information for me about the future of batteries that is going to be, um, uh, yeah, what do you say, electrifying or something. And I said, well, maybe I need to wear my rubber-soled shoes for that one. Anyway, we'll see. Oh, no, he said shocking. That's what he said. All right. Uh, also, Patreon, you want to join Patreon. And right now, there's a very, very big special. I'll tell you about that later. Okay, let's jump into it. All right. This, what I'm looking at here, is the PCE report that is put out every month by BEA, all right? And you can go, you can just, you know, look up PCE, uh, you know, month over month, uh, you know, August 2023, or, you know, some kind of a good prompt that'll get you to uh, their monthly uh, uh, news release. And you can see, here's news release, and you can look it up under any particular month. So this particular one is their August release, okay? And you can see that it's showing April, May, June, and July, and August of 2022. So that's what we're gonna be looking at. And we're gonna look down here. We're not gonna pay a lot of attention to disposable dollars. We're not gonna look so much at personal consumption. You can see that that fluctuates a lot. Um, we're not gonna look, but what we are gonna look at is the thing that the, that the, the uh, Fed apparently is looking at, and the thing that'll help you to better understand the trends in inflation, if you look at these numbers, um, like I have just done today for the very first time again, I, I wish I'd seen these reports before. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to take a look. Last year, okay, first of all, these numbers down here are the same month in the prior year. These numbers here are the month compared to the previous month. Okay, what you're going to see here is, look, last year, the rates month over month for the headline number were sitting at 0.2, but a big one, 0.6, then only, then a, way up to 1%, then down to negative 0.1. They're all over the place because why? Because the, the, the headline is very volatile, much more volatile then is the, the core or the one that excludes food and energy from the numbers. So you can see that that was 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, you know, but these are pretty big numbers. That's where we hit the top last year. Um, and then we started down, but you can see, wow, what happened here? The month over month was negative in July and for the, for the headline and it's zero for core. Now, if I'd known this information, when I was making my calls last week, or this week rather, with regard to PCE, I would have never said, oh, we're gonna drop down below 4% because it would be almost impossible <laughs> because we would have had to been more negative even than that in the, in the previous, in the uh, month of July. And we know that that wasn't true. All right, so people can use this to make their own predictions. Now we look at the same month last year, and this is what the, Fed is all concerned about. This is the number one thing they're looking at, this final bottom line here. And you can see that it was running around 5% all last summer into August. 
And this is where they were very, very concerned. This was a continuing trend. Uh, it wasn't going down much at all. And so they started hiking rates and hiking rates and hiking rates. All right, let's go on to the next period. This is the period that starts in September of 22 and goes through January of 23. All right, we're going to look here at the same information. And you can see that the, <clears throat> the month over month was dropping to where now we're, we're 0 0.3, 0 0.4, but then all of a sudden 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Then we all of a sudden we had a 0 0.6 though in January. All right, so we are going along really nice. And then even on the core, really jumped up a little bit in those two months. So we're continuing to see the same thing here. We're still in the fives and the fours. So all the way through January, as the Fed is raising, 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 this is what they are paying attention to. And they are seeing they're getting a little bit of a downtrend, but the downtrend is not consistent and it's nowhere near 2%. All right, now let's go to the next cat, the next section here, which would be from March through July. We drop down here, all of a sudden starting in March, on the month over month, we're getting 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So you're seeing here that from March until now, we've basically been going up if you analyze that at 2.4, okay? If you look at the core, even there, where you're looking month over month, you're looking at maybe 2.6. Well, maybe you're looking at 2.6 times 12. So maybe you're looking at 3% uh, year over, I mean, sorry, uh, when you're looking at the month over month, but if you annualized it, maybe you're looking at three, but really for the last two months, you're looking at, at 2.4. So if you can continue to hit these twos, then, you know, the Fed is probably extremely happy. But then you get down to um, uh, the, the core. I mean, I'm sorry, to the, I'm sorry, to the, to the month, same month as last year. You're seeing it's dropping down, okay, but still sitting here at 4.2. All right. On the, the, the number one number they want right here, they want that to be 2%. All right, now let's go to the next one. I'm sorry, this was this was the one that took us through July, the very most recent one. So they're still sitting here seeing a 4.2% number. They're seeing it drop. But if they look up here, and they should be looking up here, they can see that if you look over the multiple months, five months now, you're really, really close to 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, somewhere in that range. So that should be really, really good news. They should be seeing that as good news. Now then you can do the same thing with the CPI, okay? And so I got out the CPI here and you can see this is the, uh, over, the, the over the year change here. And this is the over the month change here. And uh, we're starting uh, at the very top here. You can see July. Um, and so when you look the same month last year, dropping nicely all the way 8.2 5 4 3 3.3 jumped up a little bit last month as you know okay and then the month over month um it's been sitting really good for a very very long time so last year's numbers are starting now they they will start now to start to impact when you're comparing these numbers to a month to a year ago all right and that was kind of the point that every the multiple people were trying to make to me as I'm reading their articles or listening to the news broadcast. And they're saying, yes, but you have to look at what it was same month last year. What kind of a change was there in that month in order to be, and I would even say that out loud to you guys, but I didn't know that I could go get this data. All right. So now we'll look at the seasonally adjusted prices that changes things a little bit. So overall, all items you'll notice it is even less when it's seasonally adjusted. So here's 12 months end of July at only 3.2. So all of these numbers look awfully good. You'll notice some of these categories like the energy categories, you know, have been in negative, negative for the year, still looking negative. Uh, but you get into the services, you get into shelter, those are looking up. And that's why we have the problem of trying to balance the two. Now let's look at trueflation real quick. As you know, trueflation has been showing a very steep downtrend. Now you see, you notice how there was this uptrend back in March, April. Okay, and then it started down again. All right. Well, we're kind of going through that again. Almost exactly, almost exactly the same kind of line. We had another one over here. 
So from time to time, this trend has been broken. And obviously, the Fed doesn't want this trend to continue to go up. But if we look deeper into this, and that's what I've recommended to you guys before on Trueflation, truflation.com, T-R-U-F-L-A-T-I-O-N, truflation.com. I recommend that go in, they go into some depth here, go into the, take a little deeper look. So food and beverages, you can see, here's the chart, food and beverages, they jumped up, but now they're headed very, very steadily down over the last several months. So they are looking good. They're still sitting at, right now you're looking at, uh, overall, you're looking at barely, you know, an increase, just 0.36, all right? So now you go into the next category. Let's go to housing. Housing, you'll notice there's two different lines here. Well, there's three. This is the total. Is this the the, the total line is still showing 4.23, and that's a big component. But now look down here at rents. Rents are at zero. Year over year, month over they're at zero. Okay, it'll be zero for months. All right, but that hasn't shown up in the information the Fed's looking at yet. It's not showing up in the CPI or in the PCE. So now you look here, though, as you and as I've been talking about on the show for a lot, for months, you're going to always have this seasonal, these are not seasonally adjusted, you're always going to have these seasonally increasing prices in the, in the uh, sp spring and summer, unless you're in a recession or unless you're in a housing recession. We're not in a housing recession. We're in the opposite. We have a problem with not having enough inventory. So you can see owned dwellings going up 5.42%. Okay, now case shilling is showing that owned dwellings, by the way, are flat year over year, actually slightly down. So there's a disconnect a little bit here between case shilling and uh, the uh, folks here at Trueflation, but maybe obviously they're looking at more than just case shilling, Maybe Zillow's got some different numbers. Maybe uh, 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 Redfin, et cetera, have some different numbers. But this will begin to trend down as we go into the winter. It always does. And no reason to think it won't this year. Um, you get into the next one, which is transport. These are the big ones. I'm not going to go through all of them. If you're interested, you can go in through all these. But look at transport. So the overall transport number now is sitting at 2%. That's an acceptable number. All right. That counts cost of vehicle purchases, counts um, gasoline, other fuels, and motor oil, but you'll notice gasoline, fuel, motor oil, et cetera, dramatically going up now back closer to zero. So we had it down here at way negative. Now it's getting back to zero. What we don't want is that trend to continue. We want now for that to flatline or go down. I'd be, I'd be perfectly happy with a flat line. I hope the Saudis would be happy with a flat line. <laughs> so, so if that happens, then we should start getting better numbers. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about today is this is the, the using these different tools, you could predict now, you could become a very good predictor. I will be a much better predictor. What we know from what we looked at here is that as we go forward into the next months, we're going to be seeing easier and easier time next month. Look here. This was point for, for August of last year, PCE on the month over month was up 0.3 on the headline and 0.6 on core. Well, that's going to be an easy beat. So next month, we can almost be 100% positive that PCE is going to drop under that 4% that I was hoping for this month, maybe to 3.9, something like that. So this gives us, unless we see inflation, we see the CPI down at zero, maybe we'll do even better than that. But let's, for now, maybe my number, my 3.9 will come true next month. And that will give the Fed all the ammunition they need to be able to see that continuing downtrend. If they continue to see these month over months at 0.2, 0 0.10, you know, even an occasional 0.3, but just an occasional one, I think they'll be fine. So, Anyway, I wasn't doing this so much for to make any new predictions today, but rather to help you provide you with the tools that would help you to be better able to predict in the future and also me. And you'll see where I'm getting my tools when I am making those predictions as we go forward. OK, so now you, you've been wondering all about this. You've been wondering about this guy, right? OK, it's got a it's got a brother or a sister. I'm not sure. We've got uh, we've got a, a plane and we've got a, a camo. Now, what the heck are these things? <laughs> well, these are stainless steel, the same gauge as the stainless steel in the Cybertruck. These are 
magnets. They're designed as refrigerator magnets. I mean, you could prop them up on a wall. You could put them, you could make them a, a wall decor. You could put them in a, in a shadow box. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways you could use these, but they do in addition happen to be a bottle opener here. Uh, so you can, you know, you can open your bottle. And the idea is, of course, if it's a refrigerator magnet, you've always got your bottle opener right there. But of course, the fun part is that it is a Cybertruck. The fun part is it even has a camo version. Now, how do you get yours? That's what you're asking. Oh, by the way, it comes in this like Apple type box, you know, with a with a magnetic, a magnetic clasp and stuff. I mean, a very nice gift box. Who do you know that's waiting for their cyber truck and that this would be an amazing gift for them? Who do you know that just is all into Tesla and this would be an amazing gift? Oh yeah, there's you. <laughs> maybe there's somebody in your family, maybe, but maybe it's you. Anyway, okay, here's how you do it. Uh, if you want to buy it right now direct, you just uh, send 25 bucks to paypal.me. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, dot me, paypal.me slash Randy Kirk. Send 25 bucks. Now, several of you from foreign countries, we've sold a bunch of these the first day. Uh, I've had three people from foreign countries saying, "What? Uh, what I, can I get one too? Yes, if you're in a foreign country, even Canada, even Mexico, you have to add 20 bucks. Okay, that's what it's going to cost DHL to get it to you. So just add 20 bucks. So 25 bucks for the for the basic. If you if you if you're going to DHL it, it's going to be another 20. By the way, for those of you in foreign countries, if you buy two, it's still only going to cost you 20 bucks for the freight. So you could buy two and only add 20 bucks. Add 20 bucks. If you buy 10, just add 20 bucks. Okay, it's all fine. So 25 bucks a piece. And uh, and then if the other way to do it is you can join Patreon, which you've been wanting to do anyway. You've been sitting there going, you know, I really should join Patreon. <laughs> I need to support that guy. I need to support that channel. I need to, anyway, you, but you have to join at the $10 level. Now, if you join at the $10 level and you do the seven day trial, then I'm going to have to wait until it clicks over into the real thing before I send it to you. Or you can join at the $10 level and immediately, you know, uh, be a full member, and then I'll send it out right away. Uh, these are probably going to ship. My guess is they're going to ship starting Monday. I'm sorry, Monday's a holiday, so starting Tuesday. So please uh, don't don't yell and holler. I don't think we'll be all set up yes yet, ready to start shipping them tomorrow. But almost certainly by Tuesday we'll start shipping these. All right. So those are the two ways you can do this. You get one free um, if you join Patreon at the ten dollar level. You get uh, a Shoot, you know, if you want to join at the fifty dollars level, I'll send you two. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send you five. <laughs> anyway, at the ten dollars level, you're going to get one. Uh, please let me know camouflage or not camouflage, uh, and or camo. And then um, also with regard to the, uh, if you do it by PayPal and you send me the twenty five dollars or the forty five for foreign uh, sh uh, shipping addresses, um, you know, uh, please also mention camo or plane. All right, that's it. That's how you get them. I, I think it's a fun product. I don't know about you, and an amazing gift. That's all. Is you want to hit like, you want to hit subscribe, you want to hit notify in order to he hear from Larry Goldberg and from Brian Wong over the next couple of days, plus just the normal shows. And uh, and that's it. That's all I got for you. And um, uh, you know, it's been great, amazing talking to you. <laughs>